Hi guys, it's Mr. Sci-Fi, and we've just launched our Kickstarter campaign, and it's good to have everyone here. Uh, I am also getting onto the table, and then we will have a thorough experience, which will be great, and it will be another swell evening uh, with all of us here um, spending some time with each other. So, hold on, here we go. Hi, everybody. All right, Let's so everyone see. would other than Mark, of course, yes. would mute themselves. Great. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Cool. Great. There we go. And I'll go back to my... There we go. Mm. And there is the YouTube. Okay. Here we all are. Gotcha. Yay, us. Okay. Here we are. Hello, welcome to the table, everybody. We have hello, Adam. Yeah, hi, Adam. Hello. And I'm on Mr. Sci-Fi as well, and life is uh, peachy keen. Okay. So um, we have a giant Adam. Yes, we do. So it's yeah, we can change I that. I get this big. <laughs> yes, we can change that. I guess so. To gallery view. Yes. Gallery view. Let's see where's gallery view. Gallery view. Up in the uh, right hand corner. Hmm. It's not doing it. Upper upper right. Yeah. It says it's, view. Yeah, I'm I'm here, but it's not doing it. Uh, let's see. Hmm, that's weird. Oh, I see. I see. Wait, wait, wait. Let me try this. Uh, gallery. There we go. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. Okay. Hi, everybody. So, Adam, how are you doing? Do you want to take your turn first, since you're uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I can, there? I can jump in here. Go for it. Start this. Start this little shindig here. Great. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, for those of you who I, I guess Katrina is like the only one who doesn't know me. <laughs> uh, I am Adam Sartain. I am an actor, a voice actor uh, who can do over 78 different voices, accents, and impressions. And I am an associate producer on Space. Yay, come come on. Yay. Yay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was just, I just got back earlier from a, um, a perk uh, uh, shipment run. So we're shipping out perks. We just shipped out a whole bunch of stuff today. Uh, that was great. And um, yeah, so I was just at the studio. Great. Today. Great. Uh, Eric, Eric was there doing working his magic. <laughs> 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 and uh, <laughs> uh, also last week I wasn't here because... I had my first Santa Claus gig. Yay! Three cheers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I play Santa Claus, and uh, I'm darn good at it too. Uh huh. Cool. <laughs> so Excellent. I was I was hired to be Santa for a um, Sam's Club event. Apparently, Sam's Club is doing events all over the country <laughs> um, uh, called uh, their, with their slogan of "Bring the Mary." Yes. And so uh, I was there as Santa Claus to help them bring the Mary. There you go. Uh, mingling amongst the amongst the attendees. And um, uh, the mayor of Santa Clarita was there. Um, mm -hmm. Fox 11 News was there. So that's great. It was kind that's of a big great. deal. It was fun. Do you ever Terrific. confuse your Santa Claus with your horror? <laughs> Definitely not. Uh -huh. <laughs> good. Well, that's good. Definitely That's good. <laughs> good. Especially good, good, when good. kids are around. <laughs> cool. So I did have some mm -hmm. kids that have lots of questions. Anyway, um, <laughs> what else? Uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, is there anything you need, Adam? Um, just uh, oh, um, yeah, not right now, really. But uh, I did want to say, yesterday, last night, we had a lovely table read with Cherie of her uh, of her screenplay. Uh, Great. Um, what was it called? Dumpster Donna. Yeah, huh, so that was huh. that was a lot of fun. Uh, which uh, David Bartlett gave very expert um, uh, narration for, and I played a bunch of uh, roles. Wow, the table read. So That's great. Uh, there's that, and uh, I also took a class uh, yesterday morning, uh, which was uh, from Groundlings. It was an online class called uh, the SNL uh, audition experience. Huh. Cool. Which was very interesting. It uh, it definitely I had a lot of misconceptions about 
the SNL audition experience. Uh -huh. uh, and it definitely like um, put those in perspective. Uh -huh. Great. I, I thought it was much harder hmm. to, get, to get an audition than it actually is. Hmm. Cool. So, that was that was very good to know. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's it for me. Okay. Yay. Hey Adam, three cheers, Adam. You now is there me. is there a Mr. Sci-Fi question? There is, believe it or not, yeah. right out the gate from Mark Lungo. Hi, Mark. He he says, Hey Zikri. Hey. Will the Space Command story have a definitive conclusion? Yes. Yes. At least the story arc of the first season will. Uh, because we've created a universe uh, full of possibilities, we can branch off into many further stories, just like Star Trek or Star Wars or any of those. But um, but we actually are aiming toward a very specific conclusion and um, busy at work on all that stuff. So thanks although, for asking. Although, so as not to lose some of our favorite actors, there will be some like flashbacks, memory pieces, you know, mm -hmm. yes, um, indicating some of their wisdom, this and that. Uh, so that we don't entirely lose our people as we move through the generations. Yes, and yeah, but it's 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 going to be great. Mm -hmm. So, oh, Bonnie, I guess you're at the top of my screen. If you want to take your uh, your turn and and uh, go for it. Sounds good. And uh, let's see, tomorrow you're doing your um, uh, Mr. Sci-Fi or uh, well, uh, coast to coast. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to use my landline then again. I will indeed. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. No problem. So yeah. That's great. Great. See you Thanks. Tomorrow. You bet. Yeah. And um, yeah, working on different things. Um, and uh, I was offered something that, um, a big decision, but I, I think I've decided in favor. Hmm. Good. I've been on the union board for 19 years. Hmm. Wow. And the vice president just resigned and I've been asked to step up. So. Great. Great, great. It's a huge commitment. I mean, it means I mostly can't do a lot of composing, but um, I've been thinking about it and talked to a couple of people close. I'm really encouraged to do so. Hmm. It pays very well. Mm -hmm. um, so it looks like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Wow, so, that's um, great. So that's it. It's <laughs> vice president, so you don't have all the all the all the. Um, worries of the president no you just sit back and relax and yeah <laughs> and just and just remember when when push comes to shove just say the pension fund was just sitting there okay, yes. okay. <laughs> yep yep so uh, yeah it's very interesting i was like wow um but yeah i guess i'm going to do that i mean i have to be approved at the next board meeting but i'm sure that will happen that's great but it's very interesting right now um and in, in, i'll just say it's um the president and secretary treasurer are brilliant. We're wow. on the same page. I mean, I was sitting with them talking for two hours yesterday. I mean, huh. I already know I've been, they've been, they both came on in January, but I've been wow. there, you know, mm -hmm. wherever. And like they were saying, um, so I will be appointed interim and then I have to be approved at the next general membership meeting in January. But, um, it's just funny because this we have a woman secretary treasurer. She's the third in the history of 123 year uh, history of the union. For the first time, we have a, a woman president. I'm going, holy cow! We'll have all the officers as women. <laughs> so it's just like wow. So, um, but they're extremely um, brilliant, confident. I mean, uh, uh, we're in such a good space. Uh, if there's anybody I want to, you know, really work us. Uh, next to they or them. So, I mean, all in all, it's, wow, a big change, but uh, exciting. So, um, yeah. Great. I'm now I'm going to do that. Um, so, That's great. Uh, so kind of, um, but uh, last Saturday I had a, uh, was part of a composer con composer's concert and <laughs> uh, I played a piece of my own and a piece of That's another great. composer's and that, a composer and that went really well. And um uh, working on two musicals and just uh, different things. So, um, yeah, mm. lots happening. Wow. Oh, so, congratulations. Anyway, yeah. Good for you. Yay. Yeah. Three cheers. Yay, Bonnie. All right. Thanks. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Is there another Mr. Sci Fi question, Adam? Um, no, but uh, uh -oh. I did forget to say that I uh, recorded a new episode of my podcast. Great. Um, 
I am go I have decided to go on hiatus for the rest of the year. I'm still going to be recording podcasts, but uh, my next season of Inside Animation, that's the name of the podcast, uh, will drop the first Monday in January. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So cool. Very good. Okay. As well. So I guess, Thane, I guess it's your turn then. Hello, everybody. Uh, your new face is here. I'm a SAG after character actor. I do some voiceover work. Uh, Last night I uh, showed uh, a short film that I uh, wrote, directed, and co-starred in. Uh, we made movies and got some good feedback and some ideas about doing some final edits. So I think tweak it up a little bit. Uh, it seems like uh, auditions are about uh, two a week these days. Uh, nothing's gel, but uh, it's good practice and. One of these days, uh, they'll all hit it once. <clears throat> um, and <laughs> just, uh, oh, I had my uh, my uh, booster shot on Tuesday. Great. And uh, yesterday, I, you know, I just didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I tried to do something, my body <laughs> said, go take a nap. <laughs> Bane? Yeah. You're Little low in volume. Can you uh, be louder somehow? I don't know how to raise the volume on the microphone. Yeah. Get closer to it. Maybe get a little closer. Does that help? Better. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Great. So go ahead, please. At any rate, um, just stand busy and uh, uh, trying to um, be creative and. Support the people I uh, I work with, and looking forward to uh, what comes next. Great, great. So, is there anything you need? Uh, not specifically. Uh, you know, the standard uh, actors cry of the next project. Yes. Uh, we all know that already. Yes. Uh, and the more I. Uh, do these projects like the little film I did uh, I showed last night more I think uh, a lot of people say just go write your own stuff and produce it and get it done and uh, and there's a certain amount of wisdom in all that. yes yes one guy that pushes that all the time and I can't quite <laughs> yes I'm crank so <laughs> have you ever had an audition class audition class yeah I got both uh, for uh, uh, online audition or self tape audition and in person auditions, cold reading, uh, a variety of. Uh, Great. I was, just, I was just wondering yeah, because I, yeah. you know, a couple of actors told me that they were their their uh, ratio of booking went way up after a class. So yes. I was just curious. Yeah, it's that's fine. Yeah. So anything else, Thane? So. Uh, I'd be curious to know which classes those uh, were that paid off. Uh, yeah, the good ones. Yeah, I <laughs> wish I, I wish I'd asked. We should probably put out a blast to the uh, table list and say yeah. who had audition classes that really worked for them. Sure, sure. That sounds good. We can do that. Absolutely. So anything else, Thane? Uh, I think that's uh, pretty much it. Okay. Yay. Three cheers, Thane. Great. So is there another Mr. Sci-Fi question, uh, Adam? Uh, no, it's pretty white tonight. Huh. Well, it was, it's Veterans Day, so maybe they're ha they're 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 hanging out with veterans and you know knocking back the malt whiskey. So okay. So um uh and 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 just as a little side note for those who don't know, we've launched the Twilight Zone campaign on Kickstarter. Uh, I'm going to be doing over a hundred commentaries on episodes of the Twilight Zone. So if anyone wants to spread the word or or let any Twilight Zone fans know. It's a great Christmas present. It's only 49 bucks for 100, over 100 episode commentaries. So pretty cool. Uh, so Dave, Dave Edison, there you are. You look very good there. Go for it. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm all vertical and everything. Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Dave Edison, your uh, uh, full-time editor here on Space Command. Yay. Et <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking off screen here because I'm, I'm doing cleanup on a, uh, a, a new timeline for a, 
that I need to send to our pal, Mr. Bartlett over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm <laughs> pointing at himself. For those of you who are Mr. Sci-Fi, can't see that. Uh, David will be doing the color correction on this so far. We've got about 18 minutes of it color corrected, and I'll be sending him the new timeline so he can keep adding to it. And uh, we'll plug it in and see if that workflow works for us. It's not quite a typical workflow, but what on Space Command is typical. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we're, we're oh, not quite making it up as we go along, but we're uh, we're course adjusting. So, um, anyway, so uh, we're getting closer to having a uh, a digital download of the first two hours stitched together as a feature length um, show. Uh, for you to have for the holidays. Yes. And uh, other than that, um, uh, the, uh, Mike Lopez's film, uh, um, You'll Be Okay, keeps uh, keeps making the rounds at the uh, at the various festivals. Uh, this week, I guess it is, uh, the uh, Transgender, San Francisco <laughs> Transgender Film Festival will have it in contest. And uh, it won something. I don't even know what. I guess I can look at the website. I haven't checked in a few days. Mm -hmm. For the Tokyo Shorts Film Festival to see uh, what it won there. And uh, another film that I worked on, a very short music video uh, for uh, my friend Pat, who, uh, who directed, a, wrote and directed a music video uh, to deal with his grief uh, of, over a, a loss of his beloved dog. Aww. Was at the, uh, uh, no, that wasn't at the Transcendent Film Festival. What was it? Oh, was it the dog? Yes, there's was, was actually a specific dog film festival. Oh, look, there's a dog right now. Yes, I, exactly. I, I think I have to uh, walk take the a dog. little walk. Yeah, okay. I'll be right back, everyone. Bye. Bye, Elaine. Elaine is going to empty the dog. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. yes. Again. <laughs> okay. And thank you. And that reminds me, but one of these days I've got to get my glands expressed. Uh, but, uh, boy, there's so many things I could say about that. But go ahead, please. Please, please, please don't. Really? It'll, it'll make me regret it even more. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> even, even the dog is commenting. Yes, even the so, dog. Uh, anyway, so uh, to my friend Pat's uh, film, uh, "Time to Say Goodbye" was at the uh, uh, the I guess it's a National Dog Film Festival, which was I think it's actually the international. No, 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 the New York Dog Film Festival, but mm -hmm. it's shown international, uh, internationally, at least nationally. So it was in San Diego on Sunday, and it was in LA uh, yesterday. And I emailed Pat to see how it went, and. When I hear back from him, I'll let you know. Okay. And other than that, we're just keeping busy trying to trying to get this thing finally done mm -hmm. uh, before the, before the next two episodes yep. are up at bat. And then with a with a little bit of luck, uh, we'll get those finally done. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Great. And, uh, and if there's any beyond that, well, feel free to be surprised. No, we're just fine. we're we're cooking with gas, Dave. All right. All right. Fine. Fine. I I. I I admire your your confidence and your tenacity, and uh, as I understand it, you're made of iron and nothing will stop you. Yes, 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 yes. And although, uh, although I've been thinking about that, build your wings on the way down. Thing, uh, yeah, that there's Rupert. that's yeah. Raise raise comment. It's like build your wings on the way down. That that's what about when you don't? <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's 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 kind of optimistic, but yeah, but real really risky. Yes, 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 exactly. So, anything else, Dave? But, now, so are you doing okay? Everything all right? Life is a uh, bowl of cherries. All right. Well, we got this new uh, Kickstarter yep. launched. Yep. And, uh, um, Roaring so along. Anything that needs to be, well, anything, I'm sure well, nothing's going to happen until the fest, uh, until the, uh, um, until the campaign is done anyway. So everything's going, happen? yeah. Well, we'll get into all that stuff. It's going to go great. And there's, and there's new, miss, uh, there's new, uh, Twilight Zone minutes mm -hmm. um, at least a few times a week. Yes, on, uh, on Mr. Sci-Fi. So mm -hmm. have at those very interesting stuff. Yes, and I will catch up with you next time. Yay! Three cheers! Excellent! Yay! So, Adam, is there a Mr. Sci-Fi uh, question? There, there is. Yay! Uh, first off, Kathy Jean says, "Congrats on launching the Kickstarter." Thank you, Kathy. From Peoria. Yay! Uh, and Mark Lungo has another yes. wonderful question. Mm -hmm. He wants to know which of the cartoons you worked on 
most deserves a revival. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that because uh, I saw that your question mark. Uh, <clears throat> I, I think because the new Ghostbusters movie is coming out and it looks like it'll probably be pretty good. Uh, I think a, a new uh, generation of the real Ghostbusters utilizing the kids would be um, would be pretty fun. So uh, we'll see. But that's assuming the Ghostbusters movie is as good is as good as the trailers look. And you can never, of course, know until you see the movie. But it's uh, it's off to a good start. Start, I'll say that. So there you go. So David Bartlett, you're next on my screen. If you want to uh, stake your uh, territory and so forth. David Bartlett, state your name. So I am David Bartlett. I am a filmmaker and a journey human rights activist and a producer, a producer of Space Command. So I had uh, started my career in 1969 when I was 10 years old. <clears throat> I saw the Battleship Potemkin and Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera on TV and I said, I want to do that. I didn't even know what the director was. But I did it. I made my first movie. Then I did some films in high school and I worked in movie theaters. And then through a long circumstantial uh, set of <clears throat> events, I moved to LA in 1980 and went to the Sugar Oaks Experimental College, led by the, the late, great Gary Shusset. We started so many people. If someone did a documentary about Gary, hmm. it would be fascinating. Yeah. There would be many, many people from James Cameron to Martin Scorsese to Ron Howard, and so many stars and directors and producers took classes from his school, uh, as I did. So I worked with James Cameron doing sets, building sets at New World Studios. And I was uh, working with Robert Wise, director of The Sound of Music and West Side Story, and four Academy Awards. And oh, yeah, he was also the editor of Citizen Kane. And I got to be his apprentice for a short time, hanging around on his set for a, a film for the Motion Picture Home Hospital Fund. Uh, this, the uh, hospital fund funded by the film industry for the film industry, which is the only one of its kind in mm -hmm. the U.S., one of the few in the world. And it's an amazing you know, motion picture, uh, MPI is what it's called, um, insurance is uh, some of the strongest health insurance of any of them out there. And he was a big supporter of that, so he was doing a promotional film for it. And I got to meet Goldie Hawn and Chris Christopherson, who had just shot Heaven's Gate but hadn't been released yet. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that don't remember what Heaven's Gate was, it was one of the biggest box office flops of all time. But it was also directed by the director of the... Uh, the Deer Hatcher, uh, Michael Cimino, who was uh, a brilliant filmmaker and just got out of control on that film and lost $39 million <laughs> mm. out of its 40 that mm. it was amused to make. So that was fun to be around with him because everyone wanted to know what it was like. And he said, he said uh, it's a beautiful film. I saw it. You know, he was very you know, positive about the film, so, as you would be if you were the star of it. So... Uh, that was fascinating. I also got to meet and uh, and see uh, Bob, Bob as they call him, Bob, you know, my buddy Bob Wise. Um, Robert Wise directing an improvisation with Sid Caesar to set up one of the clips that he was introducing. So that was quite an interesting experience for me. All the people in the film were huge Hollywood people. The, the key group had worked with John Ford and the cinematographer had shot uh, many films with Clint Eastwood like the Iger Sanction, for example, which is one of the great cheesy movies of all time. If you're going to have a lot of fun just seeing a cheesy movie, it's really good. That's the Iger Sanction. Mm -hmm. He plays a spy who's also a rock, a rock climber. So he has to climb the Iger to find out who on the team is the spy that uh, wants to kill him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, with a straight face. But it's an awesome movie. So I can't believe I was going to talk about the Iger Sanction tonight. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I started then working on so very big movies as a sound designer and I worked on Total Recall and I worked on Pulp Fiction and Speed and Tremors and, and uh, a lot of other movies and then I started doing films of my own or working with friends doing their films uh, doing independent films and now I have 65 film festival awards <laughs> so if you ever want to know what it was like to work on a, a giant budget movie with a studio or a TV movie that won a whole bunch of awards I could answer both of those questions. <laughs> so I'm losing my audience. They're all going, mm. my two dogs. So <laughs> mm. anyway, so um, let's see. 
right now, I kind of dovetail my work on Space Command with the pitch for Space Command, which is totally appropriate thing to do. And I think that's probably the thing to do tonight. Oh, yeah. So what am I doing now? Here's something I did today that I don't think Mark has even seen the link for. Really? So he's, uh, he might be surprised about this as the rest of you, but it's going to be fun. This has just happened today. Mm -hmm. This is a Mark Zickery uh, low-budget filmmaking solution for a problem that we have, hmm. which is that building sets and costumes are expensive. Mm -hmm. So here's Mark's solution for that. If I can get this so it plays right mm -hmm. here. Oh. Is reflected in that one. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to see it, David. Well, it's not on yet. Oh, okay. It's dark. Uh oh. You hear Let's see. It'll be worth it. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna fix this in post. We will. Oh, good idea. Here we go. Ready? Okay. There. Hmm. That is a cat carrier. Ah, neat. With lights inside of it. Cool. <laughs> be a space helmet. That's fun. That's cool. Yeah, I can I can tell the the story about that. Yeah, send me that that video, David. I'd love to see it. Does you have that video? I don't think you've. Oh, seen good. It it's been I've been on the run. Uh, to to explain what that's about is that uh, I was at the dog park the other week. And someone had, had brought a cat, fools that they are, and uh, they had a cat carrier that looked like a space helmet. So I went on to Amazon, bought it, and now we've rigged it up with lights, and I'm going to put it on the uh, uh, that white spacesuit right. there. And it's really cool. Yeah, and I, I can't wait to uh, to see it in the flesh. That's going to be great. That's cool. That's cat carrier. That's great. And it's got – it's really designed for us to steal from making it a space suit yes. design. It's a backpack. That's great. And Mark saw this and said, oh, we got to make that into a helmet. Yes. Yes. And here's another shot of it. And here is the uh, video of it coming on. Hey. And there's our girl. Wow. How fun. And one of our $40 mannequins. Wow. That's fun. That's great. How cool. Our, our genius LED guy <laughs> with his hand on her head. Wow. That's neat. <laughs> That's cool. Well, thank you for that, David. I appreciate it. So, um, let's see. Speaking of Space Command, <laughs> if you are interested in working on Space Command, now's your chance. We do once a day, basically, in the studio, building things like that. You could help Eric line the inside of that cat carrier really <laughs> delights and see which ones look cool but are really hard to mount, which is the one we did today. <laughs> That's a really cool one that we found. Eric is our my he's a gaffer but he also finds things like this this is a a rope of led lights that's solid hmm. wow like a, you know the whole way there's no little light bulbs in between that's cool so i have not seen that yet inside a space suit so we're going to see about getting that set up <laughs> cool um, so we build sets we build cat carriers into led lights uh you know limit line with led lights we build um all sorts of things neat Space Command, which is filming in the spring, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and we're getting ready for that too. Also, we do uh, crowdfunding fulfillment, which Adam has been extremely helpful with. In fact, uh, he shipped today, right? He yeah. Some stuff today. Yeah, he did. He uh, did. We got three, three more. Uh, I think we got three more perks shipped. We have been working on shipping perks for the last year and a half, pretty much two or three people uh, all week one way or the other, working on this. And we got 130 perks down to probably about 35 perks. Wow. We're chipping away at the last ones. We're going to shoot another video on Tuesday, I guess it is, mm -hmm. and, uh, with Mark announcing things Neat. like um, artwork from the shows yep. that have been done along the lines. And he's on camera All looking sorts. at the artwork, and then we make a video of him talking about them with the artwork cut in so he can narrate the artwork of the film. And that's an example of one perk. Yeah, that's fun. Because do the Kickstarter campaigns, we can definitely help you uh, go the right direction with what you should have as a perk and what you should not have as a perk. 
like a 3D hand painted model of the Paladin spaceship, for example, would be an example of something you should probably steer away from. <laughs> um, but you know, these electronic perks are awesome. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get a ton of them out at Christmas along with our download of episodes one and two. So I actually have things to do with all of that too. Mm -hmm. So you can contact me. You can become part of the Space Command clan, <coughs> some paid positions. You can work your way up to positions that you would rather have. Uh, than the ones that you're currently having, which we're particularly fond of doing, helping people do that. And uh, this this life's kind of, it's a little, you know, Charles Kiro, but it's, it's cool. All right, what do you guys think? <laughs> um, so that, I'm the person to talk to for volunteering and for getting paid jobs both. Cool. So the third thing is the table email. The table email is something that I am the coordinator of right now. If you want to be a member of the table email, I'm looking around on the screen here. I think everyone here is a member currently. But sometimes people might have some challenges or difficulties uh, getting onto the table email or, or using it. Um, I'm the person to contact for both of those. So if you are out there in the Mr. Sci-Fi land uh, and are not able to see our screens here, my email for that, which is open to you guys too for now, is davefilms, D-A-V-E-F-I-L-M-S at hotmail.com. And that's how you can uh, contact me to get on the table email. So is, is Sheree not here? Did she leave? Oh, too bad. We did yeah. this table reading of her script last night, and it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. a very clever, interesting, modern story twist on an old, you know, uh, girl goes to the big city twist. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a lot of fun reading that. Cool. I read. I said, yeah, how about if I read all your, your stage directions, all the interior house days? I'm like, yeah, that's cool. My eyes were burning. I was getting hoarse throat. I was drinking this drink that was like, it was crazy. It's <laughs> it's actually very challenging to do that much reading all in one place. It was also lots of fun. Mm -hmm. So I thank her for that. There she is. Oh, she just jumped on. I was just giving you props right. for the reading from last night. Great. I was saying it's on the break. I got some, some, uh, you know, paper towel with water. I was like wiping my eyes cause they were like burning from like staring at the screen so hard, but, uh, it was, it was challenging and exciting and a lot of fun. Cool. So that's kind of, it oh I'll put my email in the chat here also for those of you on screen. Okay. And that's it, I guess. Cool. Yay. Three cheers, David Bartlett, ladies and gentlemen. So uh Adam, is there another Mr. Sci Fi question? Yes. Uh we have a new question from a new commenter, mm -hmm. Island Timekeeper. Great. Asks, will you be offering any post production instructionals? out of space command sure you bet uh it's and and the more people ask uh for what they want to see the better because it gives me the ideas of what what to put together it's uh dave edison uh loves loves editing uh everything we throw his way he his his, his motto is uh, give me more give me more load it on load it on more weight right dave and so <laughs> Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah, yeah. He just, he just, he just can't. He, he feels there's no such thing as too much work, and uh, so. Uh, what Mark means is he's had it up to here. <laughs> no, not at all. I think you've had it up to here, but uh, but well, no, that's it's. What I mean. Yes, yes, but so, um, but yeah, I'm very open to that. I love, I love um, conveying how to. I mean, the 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 real thing. If you're going to make high quality, low budget science fiction projects. You have to. You really have to bring a lot of ingenuity to bear. And and you know, I, I you know, I, the first book that made me want to be a writer producer was The Making of Star Trek by Gene Roddenberry and Stephen Whitfield. And uh, and you know th that revealed that the little medical instruments that McCoy had were salt shakers, and they were all sorts of really clever things. And uh, so I'm always looking for things that I can utilize one way or another. And I'm always looking back toward the history of science fiction for inspiration. And in fact, I just put up something I was going to show everyone. I'm a huge fan of the 1950s science fiction TV show, uh, Space Patrol. It's a big inspiration. And uh, even though I wasn't around when it was airing, I saw it later uh, in reruns. And uh, I got to meet the star of the show. So I actually uh, got a, co a uniform, a costume from Space Patrol that I just put on a mannequin. So if you can look there, I'll turn the other screen in a moment. But you can see that was actually screen used on Space Patrol. And when they go to uh, that there, then there it is over there. When they go on uh, publicity tours, they'd also wear that as well. It's, so it's it's really fun stuff. And I'm sure someone in, in uh, Space Command will will walk through screen, you know, through, through frame wearing that at some point, possibly me. So uh, we shall see what we shall see. 
don't you talk about post-production and your green lighting yourself? Book? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the plug, Adam. Yeah. I just yeah, finished exactly. a new, uh, I just finished a new book called green lighting yourself. I'm probably also going to read the audio version of it. And uh, yeah, I, I go into everything and uh, about how to build a career, how to recover from rejection and, and failure, how to build upon success, how to build a life, how to take care of your money. I mean, just everything, everything, everything. And uh, yeah, and uh, it's fun because uh, I quote a lot of my friends in the book and a lot of them just gave me blurbs for the back cover of the book. So I got Guillermo del Toro and J.J. Abrams and Damon Lindelof and Doug Jones and so forth. And uh, and that was great. That was great. And uh, so, yeah, it, it was, uh, I'm, it's the, the loveliest moment is when you've finished the book or finish the script or finish the show. It's like when you know it's done and it and it works, it does what you want it to do. But uh, so I'm very, very pleased that it's 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 done and out there. It functions as somewhat of a memoir because I get, I really go into what's worked in my life and career as well as what worked for Ray Bradbury and, you know, uh, Matheson and Serling and all the people who have mentored me one way or another. So uh, really cool. So let's see. Next on my screen is Sydney Lamb. Sydney, do you want to take your turn? Uh, I will be shooting a low budget film in February. Great. And I'd like to know if anybody on screen today is planning to shoot a film in the next couple of months and what precautions they the taking or will be taking regarding COVID-19. Mm. Number two, if they can recommend any testing sites, free testing sites in Los Angeles or San Fernando Valley. And uh, three, if there's any way or anything that's available as far as me being interviewed as producer director of this film to give it some kind of advanced publicity. So one at a time, precautions, uh, COVID-19 testing sites, and interview possibilities. Hmm. Uh, well, David Bartlett was, is a trained COVID officer, so he can perhaps afterwards, you guys can connect up and he can advise with, with some of that stuff. So uh, okay. Yeah, you can also come out and visit the studio and see how we have it set up. We've shot there <clears throat> three times now under COVID conditions, and I also have people yes. working there all the time. Yes. So I can show you how we've got it set up. Yes. If you want to come out. Yes. Where, where was that? It's in Pico Rivera. Which Pico is, Rivera? it's next to Whittier. It's just south of LA. And uh, yeah, because our, our yeah, and safety, safety is really, um, really, really important to us. So yeah, absolutely. David runs our, our physical studio and he can absolutely uh, give you a lot of pointers. Thank you. And what about COVID testing sites? Uh, uh, there's one here uh, on Santa Monica Boulevard in West Hollywood at Plummer Park. I don't know if it's free. I think it is. Uh, you might check that or you might just call. What city do you live in? Where do you live? Well, I'm in Mar Vista, but it could be anywhere in uh, L.A. or the San Fernando Valley. Um, I know CVS pharmacies were doing testing. Uh, I think if you if you you know, call us, call your nearest CVS pharmacy, and I'm sure they can tell you. Will do. Great. And finally, interview possibilities. So I was going to contribute real quick an, an additional piece of information. Is that okay? Sure, of course. Uh, the other option, which uh, I know a lot of people do to take the uh, time and energy and money off of the producers, is that each person who's going to be on set will be responsible for taking their own COVID test and bringing proof of Yes. It. Yes. Now in California, the home tests, the ones you buy at Rite Aid, Walgreens, are no longer available. So they would have to go onto a website and make sure that it's 24 hours before. And they come to set and then they sign a waiver, uh, which you can get anywhere that says, I'm not sick, nor have I been sick. Here's my waiver. Oh. And again, not to get into two different sides. It means you can have both vaccinated and unvaccinated people if you choose to have on your set and it's a personal choice. But with that, it alleviates you doing all the work, all the time and all the energy and the money. And these tests are also for free. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, cool. Anything else, Sydney? 
interview interview possibilities with somebody on a podcast or uh, so, whatever it is. So you mean getting interviewed? I'm sorry, I missed that part of your of yeah, your share. For me to be interviewed and talking about the film I'm going to do and some of the cast members and the storyline and stuff like that. What is your purpose in being interviewed? What do you want to have happen? Uh, publicize the film. But the film isn't done yet. Right, pre-publicity. Well, you know, I mean, you can do that, but it's the, the real. Okay, here's here's the way it works with with being interviewed, because uh, I've done it a lot. Uh, the uh, there there's the what's the hook, and the hook is what it's like the headline. What's going to get people to want to listen, and what's the call to action? The call to action is what you want them to do at the end of the interview. So, for instance, like I've just launched the Twilight Zone campaign, so. Uh, the headline might be uh, Mark Zickry, uh, the world expert on the Twilight Zone, is going to be talking to you know with George Nuri on Coast to Coast tomorrow night at 11 p.m. My, but my call to action is go to the Kickstarter page and 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 buy these hundred commentaries because uh, we have to hit our target or it doesn't happen. So that's you know because it's very clear. Um, publicizing a film that isn't made yet, it's very hard to. Uh, publicize that because it's not, it doesn't exist yet. Um, so unless you found a hook that would make it interesting, but again, I, I would be very, I would really get clarity around what you want from that publicity other than it just a general sense of, well, you want people to know about it so that in, you know, in a year or so when it's done, people, they'll, they'll seek it out and watch it. You know, it's, it's a little, that's a little too attenuated. Um, uh, I'm not saying not to try to do that, but it's just a little, you know, is there something special about the subject matter that would make people want to interview you about it? One of my cast members is a 93-year-old Holocaust survivor who lectures at the Holocaust Museum and find, found this story very intriguing, not because it's memorializing uh, the Holocaust, right. but because it's memorializing the halcyon days of life in a shtetl. Okay. Well, that's, you know, so obviously any Jewish podcast, any, um, anything that deals with, you know, I mean, I, if you, I mean, because the guy's 93, you might, you know, I suppose you want to, you know, jump while, while the iron is, the, 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 uh, alive. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, you could that now, would he be doing the interviews with you or would you, would you just be you? That would be uh, either one, with or without, but I would prefer it with him, and he's yeah. already agreed to doing it with me. Right. So then in that case, then yes, historical podcasts, um, podcasts about Jewish life, just go on Google and type in, like, you know, historical podcasts, Jewish podcasts, anything, any any area that focuses on something that might dovetail with what your, what the story is and what, what he's going to be talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Once yeah. again, you've all been very helpful. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank Yay. You. So, uh, Adam, is there Thane, another? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think Thane had uh, a contribution. Thane, did you have a contribution? Yeah. I, I've i been interviewed by Mother Love on her radio show mm -hmm. uh, for similar kinds of, uh, yeah. of projects uh, where we're promoting a play or whatever. And she's very sympathetic to this kind of, of material. And if you look her up, uh, Mother Love, yeah. um, you'll find her. She's sure. In the valley, uh, <clears throat> and it's easy to get to. Right. And but but one thing one thing I'll say in this regard, because I feel very strongly about it, is it's really important to be clear what you're trying to accomplish, because generalized being interviewed or or you, you have to think about who's their audience. Is this the audience that will be interested in this subject? I mean, I'm not saying not to do it, but it's sort of like if you're really directional and intentional then that can lead to book deals it can lead to you know script sales it can lead to all sorts of stuff but you have to sort of know what you're up to because most people are far too general in seeking out publicity and seeking out it's kind of like it's an ego boost but it doesn't really build toward much and again that's not to say not to do it but it's just to be to be very very clear on why you're doing it because then it then it's like connecting the pipes and having the water flow through, and uh, so that's just what I would what I would say. So 
Um, so, Adam, do you have a, a Mr. Sci-Fi question? What, what oh. I meant in the spy mark is this. Yes. Uh, not that I'm comparing this project to Blair Witch Project. No. But I think one of the reasons Blair Witch Project was such a phenomenal financial success is because they started to advertise it and market it about a year before production started. Yes. That's what the idea about pre-production uh, pre, uh, publicity uh, wouldn't hurt. Yeah. And, and, and again, I'm not saying not to. I'm just saying, um, you know... Uh, just, uh, you know, see what works and be present to if there's a benefit when you do something. For instance, let's say you did that and someone stepped forward and say, hey, I, I'd like to, to throw some money your way or, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm an editor and I'll work for free on your project. I mean, in other words, sometimes if you're clear in when during the interview, what you need, what you're looking for, that can be very specific. That can be very helpful. So just some some ideas. So. Um, Again, thank you all. Thank of course, you. of course. So, Adam, is there another Mr. Sci-Fi question? Uh, yes, uh, another one back to back from Island Timekeeper. Um, Great. He wants to know if you can talk a little bit about your work with Jerry Anderson. Yes, of course. Um, for those who uh, don't know, Jerry Anderson was the um, was a uh, a producer who did a lot of science fiction. TV shows and movies, uh, many of them were with uh, marionettes such as Fireball XL5 and Supercar and Stingray uh, but and Thunderbirds, but some of them were live action. And one of the last things he worked on was a show called Space Precinct. And I wrote, I think, three or four of them. And he had actually wanted me to um, become aboard a story editor and was going to fly me out to London. But the show had some uh, flaws in it. The idea was great, but the execution was a little wacky and and though there were some things that were great he had these animatronic alien heads which were really interesting and really fun and he and his the miniature work was terrific and uh and this is in an era where miniatures pretty much had had kind of faded from the scene to be replaced by cg so uh it was very different than the shows that i was writing at the same time like uh, babylon 5 or star trek the next generation because it was just, I mean, he was in England and it, and he was just his, like his, his own thing. I mean, he was really um, unlike everyone else. <laughs> and my, my favorite of the, of the Space Precinct episodes I um, wrote was the first one I wrote about an a, a alien and this little girl that he sort of is, uh, is a parent to, foster parent to. But, uh, but no, it, it, was, it was memorable. And, and off of that show... Michael Reeves and I had the idea of like a cop going to an alien planet with his daughter, his um, estranged daughter and uh, teenage daughter. And so we created a show called Dante Station that we're going to be doing as part of the Showrunners Network. So uh, because it's kind of like, well, this is a cool idea, but it's just not being done very well. Uh, in other words, the potential of a, of a New York homicide cop going to an alien planet was really fun and intriguing. So uh, so that's that was the, the seed of that idea. So. Great, cool. So now I noticed Katrina uh, that you've been waiting for a long time. Are you still there, or are you off in the uh, the Phantom Zone? We'll see. Nope. Okay. Well, we can we can come back to you if you're if you're not there. So next on my screen is Paul. If you wanna if you wanna take your turn, Paul. There we go. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Loud. Nice to see all of you. Mm -hmm. And nice to see some of you from yesterday, which would be David, uh, Adam, and Nathaniel, who I've seen like two or three days in a row on different things. And of course, we were reading, and Carol, we were reading uh, Cherie's hilarious script. I'm still thinking, still giving me an appetite about eating out of a trash can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, just a brief summary, what I do or have done. Uh, I created Channel Surfing Studios, which is a form of sketch comedy. It's a short form, two and a half to four minutes long. Uh, it's a high quality production. I share that not for bragging rights, just so that people know that a lot of the people from the table have worked on it. I have a crew of an average of 35 to 45 people, not including the actors. So the sets are often an average of 50 to 55 people. So I'm able to provide uh positions and work experience and mentoring for different people sometimes paid sometimes unpaid for all of the 18 sketches that i have created of those 18 sketches it's a little misleading because i'm trying to downplay it some of them have four parts some of them have two parts some of them have 
30 second, 20 30 second parts. <laughs> so in all, it's a total of uh, 90 minutes of sketch that I produced over the last decade. <laughs> With those sketches, and part of the reason why I never submitted to festivals is I put on my own events. I was so bold and daring and ignorant that I said, I'll just do it myself. And I achieved and I have done three large events called Comedy Crushes Cancer. Hmm. It brings awareness and raises money for other people who have gone through cancer like myself mm -hmm. so that people who had health illnesses, whether it be mental or physical, Maybe I could inspire them, or at the very least, they can come and have fun, and there's always free beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so is there and, anything? Oh, go ahead, please. Yes, and uh, part of the reason I came here today is that over the last uh, three years, I tried to go back to my email so I can do a tally, a, finan uh, a, a numerical statement is that I've been able to get work for approximately 75 people. Again, mm -hmm. some paid and some unpaid. Actors, it's more than 100 uh, and me personally, I've been able to hire out approximately 27 people. And the reason I share that again is not to pat myself on the back or, or uh, en enhance what I do, but more that I, uh, and I sent this off to the table at one point, and also I put it out there, uh, a process that's simple, which is a lot of times when I receive a posting and I see it and somebody needs a sound person, there's generally often a lack of information and I want to send them people, but I don't know enough. And then I send it to these people and it comes back and it becomes this convoluted process of referral or should I not and getting more information. So what I did was, and I sent this out and I'm just going to post it in the chat very briefly. Um, and hopefully, yes. And it's very simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. I just put together a modified template that says, Project title, project type, short description. What do I need? What are the dates, locations, pay rate, union, non-union, additional information, contact, and links. Now, if each person who had posted, and I know people are imperfect and we're all creative people. We're doing 20 things at a time probably. And uh, as a from the production aspect that if we were somehow to make this a template or a norm, it might simplify the process and we could support each other and provide for each other even easier. Cause I know there are times when I had five referrals, but it didn't have the date or mm. the time, or mm -hmm. if it was a union or a location. And by the time I wrote them, they wrote me back. I wrote them, they wrote me back. Then I sent the referrals, then the referrals contacted them or they contacted the referrals. It was lost. And mm -hmm. I just want to make it so that everybody can turn their passion into paychecks and we can continue to do what we love. So it's my suggestion, my idea, my thoughts, and I'm putting it out there for all of you. Okay, great. So anything else you need? No, nothing that I need. Uh, I will share um, uh, that uh, from my experience, I've, as I mentioned, I've done 18 sketches and an uh, additional total of 25 short films and a few features. What I often do now is, especially people who are doing short films, mm -hmm. uh, they'll call me and we'll have a conversation or even a coffee and they'll share with me their script and I just offer ideas. How did oh. I, how did I get 50 people to a location or how did I get to a church or how is it you got insurance for a hundred dollars when I paid 2000 and I just do this as part of the, the joy of supporting other creative people. So you're all welcome right. to reach out to me. Cool. And sometimes the answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Let's find out together. And I've been able to help so many people. Just oftentimes my suggestion doesn't work, but then it sets them on a path mm -hmm. where they can take action and be more active in finding approach rather than not taking action and not getting their project done. So that's what I'm here for. If anyone right. ever wants to reach out, I, I can put my email in here uh, as well and phone number. And at the very least, we can have a chat and nice conversation. Yay. Okay, great. Terrific. Three cheers. So Adam, is there another Mr. Sci-Fi question? Uh, yes. Our next question is from Shannon Williams. Uh, and great. she asks, Hi, Shannon. Do, you hold, do you hold open auditions for Space Command? Uh, not so much open auditions, but when we're ramping up toward production, uh, there's often a lot of roles that are possible to 
be part of, you know, so it, it just depends on where we are in a given uh, production cycle. So, you know, but we, it, it's, at, it's, it's case by case. And, but in the next few months, we will be shooting a lot and that will open up a number of possibilities. We'll let people know uh, we have, when we're. We have done casting calls. We have, yes, we have, but just right, not right now. So um, now Katrina, you were, where did Katrina go? There you are. Yes, we called on you a few minutes ago, but you weren't there. So uh, why don't you take your turn? Go for it. I'm sorry. I have a work call. Hi, everyone. My name is Katrina Nahikian. Uh, this is actually my first time at the Table Read, although Welcome. I've heard a lot about you from uh, Breaking Into Hollywood, Great. which I'm a board member on, as well as um, there is a group that I'm with, the Saturday Morning Breakfast group, that quite a few of our table members mm -hmm. are, are table members with you guys. But mm -hmm. um, I am a, a head of production for a commercial agency. Um, and that is like the day job. Um, mm -hmm. So do a lot of commercials and new media. And then um, I also am an executive producer and have some um, TV and feature film stuff out and going around. Um, so I came into the industry as an executive assistant and worked my way up through development to a development exec and then went into producing and and somehow managed to jump over into advertising when new media first started taking effect. And hmm. here I am. So wow. Um, wow. that's me in a nutshell. So, so is there anything you need? Um, I don't know if anyone is in that commercial world or has advertising background but uh we are doing as you guys know the great resignation so there's a lot of open freelance positions that we are looking for um i know some things coming up probably more like towards the new year for us will be line producers mm -hmm. and um or freelance producers and or post like editors uh staff like that area mm -hmm. so if um anyone has those connections or mm -hmm. whatnot, um, feel free to reach out to me. I can Great. put my email in the, uh, in the chat right here and you can reach out to me. Great. And, right. and what's your big dream, Katrina? What, like if everything went wonderfully, what would that look like? Um, well, that, that big dream is, uh, producing feature or TV. I've uh, been mm -hmm. very close very many times, um, with big names mm -hmm. and big studios, mm -hmm. uh, but you have yet to see either, uh, the TV series or the feature actually get produced. Mm. So. Mm -hmm. And is there a kind of material you gravitate toward? I do like um, the sci-fi or the thriller. Great. Um, yeah. Yeah, those are a lot of fun. And I, and I missed one detail. So now are you a writer as well as producer or? No, not no. writing. Not ah. writing producer. Got it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Well, that's great. That's great. So anything else for now? I don't think so. Okay. Welcome. Yay. Yay. Three cheers. Excellent. So uh, Adam, is there and now, uh, and for the people who are new tonight, we do a simulcast with my Mr. Sci-Fi YouTube channel, and that's why we alternate between table members taking their turn and uh, me asking about Mr. Sci-Fi questions. The other thing is that eventually, when it's a, just a little more safe, uh, we're going to have the table meetings, uh, an aspect, one part of the table meetings in person as well at Patty's Restaurant. So that is something in we'll be day. doing in the, in the, near, in the nearest future. So, so Adam, is there another Mr. Sci-Fi question? Yes, yes. Uh, our next question is from Jim Weiss, and he asks, uh, "What is your favorite Twilight Zone episode?" Huh. Well, uh, there's one called Walking Distance that I love a lot. It's a terrific episode. Uh, it was Rod's most personal episode. It's about a man who goes back in time to his small, the small town of his childhood to. Uh, see if he can stake a claim on it. it it's, it's wonderful. It's a first season episode. It has a great score by Bernard Herrmann. It stars Gig Young. It's beautifully written. It's just uh, a jewel in every way. So that's I, I'd say that's probably my favorite. It was Rod's favorite. So let's see now, Carol, Carol Field. Yay. Go for it, Carol. Go, yay. Yay. I'm Carol Field. We're in two pairs of glasses from okay. the 99 cents store. Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. I had such a good time reading um, in uh, Cherie's uh, movie last night. Um, I played this absolutely despicable New York narcissistic agent. Mm -hmm. oh, no nuances, just horrible. And it was so much fun. And Paul played my assistant, and he was divine. Everybody in it was really great. Adam's so good. Nathaniel's amazing. David got horse. 
It was so much fun. Um, and thank you, Sheree. Was, you're a thank you, Paul. That's so sweet. That's um, yeah. That's, I'm totally available for table reads or anything beyond. I'm not going to auditions right now. Either you put me in it, or that's all there is to it. Um, um, let me see. What did I have to say? Oh, this is fun. I was cleaning out my shed yesterday. I found two things. I won this in junior high. I was ballroom dance champion in Michigan. It is still in such good shape. I could not believe it. And then I found this when I was in George M on the road from New York with Marilyn Anderson. Here we are. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Cool. Wow. Great. Isn't that cute? Uh-huh. So I said, I have to show it to my table people tonight. Um, I have two questions. I have a lot of questions, actually. Okay, I'll try to um, not elongate myself. Um, um, are you going to be here on Thanksgiving? Do we have that Thursday night or not? I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll. We'll just we'll deliberate on that one. That's a, that's I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll I, probably put out a, a a notice and see how many people want we'll, to. Yeah, want to be part of it. I mean, it's you know. I mean, uh, we'll see. I I I you know I have to spend all day cooking cooking a turkey. Oh, and, bad you, you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> oh, I'm invited to a 26 person Thanksgiving and I declined. I said no. Yeah. This no. Said, no. Inside. inside. I said no, 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 no. No. I no. What chutzpah? I don't know. Um, if anybody has IMD, IMDb Pro, I need to know someone's representation. If you would be so kind just to put it in the chat, I just need one person. Adam, if you would, that's great. Okay. Great. Paul, Terrific. Is, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, Deborah, yeah. Deborah, it was wonderful. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Who is it? Uh, Rich Correll, C O R R E L L. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank oh, boy, this was easy. Wow. Yeah. Go um, ahead, please. Um, it was really easy. Um, <laughs> let's see what else on my little list. Uh, and Deborah, thank you. It was lovely to talk to you about the whole bully thing. Um, a producer aligned with me and wanted to get me and my books under her wing by bullying me. And uh, I'm not that dumb. You know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm not that dumb. And I just decided not to go with that MO. And Deborah was very sweet. We spoke about it. It was very, very kind. Um, yeah, so I think that's all for today. And Sydney, um, Sydney, you might want to call Sinai Temple and Valley Beth Shalom because those people are so connected. All you need to do is one interview there, and it'll fly like crazy. Mm -hmm. I think you know, just just an idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and a ton of other things. But I just want to conclude by just thanking Mark and Elaine again for being mm -hmm. here. Thank of you. course. Sydney extending your time it's just so wonderful for all of us to have this connection well thanks thank you. Thank, you. thank you to you carol yeah, yeah. my pleasure great my pleasure God great bless you all thank three you. cheers yay great so adam is carol, there oh. uh carol very quickly is it richard Carell? because that's the only one i can find on imdb as a director producer writer nope i don't See her. She go? Maybe she 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 signed off. She had enough of us. She said, "Do my work, and I'm out of here." She exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Give me my information. I'm done. Yeah. Exactly. So that that's fine. There's so, a Richard W. Corral. Oh, she. Uh, I think she got knocked off. Oh, well, let's get in the chat. There she is, there Carol. She is. Carol, you uh, you're back now. We can't hear you though. You're you're muted. But the question was, uh, there were some questions about who the, who the specifics of who you wanted them to search out. It was Richard Carell, I, Robert. Rich Carell, I just need his agent or manager. Richard Carell, and is he a director? He a director? Yeah. He was an actor. He's now a director. Yes. Okay, good. So that's probably the same guy. Okay, great. Uh, oh, oh yes. Okay, good. Thank you all. I'm sorry I clicked off. I'm not, I have little gremlins in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fine. So, um, Adam, is there a Mr. Sci-Fi question? Yes. Our, our next question is hmm. from, uh, let's see here, Scott Gamble. Hi, Scott. Back in town. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, his uh, question is, last week you were contrasting sci-fi versus fantasy and what mm -hmm. makes them tick. Yes. Do you have an opinion of George Lucas explaining away the Force as midichlorians and things? It was very stupid. It was very, very stupid. Uh, uh, often. If you keep something vague, it has more power. And that was certainly the case with the Force. And everyone hated the midichlorians. And I mean, those three movies, the, the prequels, are problematical in many ways. They've got some great stuff. Darth Maul and that fight with the, the, with the staff, you know, is, is terrific. But, but, but Lordy, 
Uh, yeah. So um, the problem was that George Lucas is not a great writer. And so he needs a great writer to work with, uh, you know, and that certainly is borne out in the first two Star Wars movies, uh, New Hope and uh, Empire Strikes Back, but with Lawrence Kasdan. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, a bad idea. So, okay, let's see who's next on the screen. Uh, Sharia, Sh go for it. Hello. Um, I had a really great table read last night Yay. with everyone. Yeah, um, there there were 11 other people besides me and, and like five are here. It's wow. really great. Um, so it went well. I, I know what I'm going to do differently next time I do a table read. Um, and especially with uh, like David Bartlett having to read all the, the scene headings and action blocks, I think I would split that up between two people and maybe like you know taking turns or something like that because that was a lot and i do write a lot of action i'm not you know a dialogue -y person i'm more of an action person so after uh, the third time it said montage of shots i was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> sorry i mean it was um, but everyone is great uh, the writing is great you shouldn't change your writing don't say think i'm saying that uh, yeah, just... uh, well, actually, okay, so I did, I, there was one joke that didn't land, and, and so I'm taking it out, because, like, sure. everyone got, everyone was saying the, the lines the way I had imagined, um, Nathaniel, you were a guy, you know, and Carol, you were Regina, and, and Paul, you were Blake, and then, you know, it's, and, and Adam did all the miscellaneous voices, so it was, it was just great, um, but yeah, anyway, so, you know, I'll do another one in the future. And I just, I really appreciate that we have the table list because that's where I got everyone from. And yeah, really, really happy about it. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> cool. So is there anything you need now? Nope. Okay. Yay. Yay. Three cheers. So Adam, is there another Mr. Sci-Fi question? Oh my goodness. So soon. Yep. Uh, no, actually, we're, we're all caught up. For uh oh, look out. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So, uh, David Goldenholtz, you're next on my screen. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can. Oh, excellent. So, a couple things. Uh, I'm a sound mixer. Uh, I do voice, uh, voice acting. And also, I um, do a little bit of editing for uh video and also sound mainly sound obviously um and also i can do table reads if you need it but i haven't done those in quite some time but i am available for that and uh my question is um mm -hmm. Well, I don't have a very big question, anything specific, really. Mm -hmm. But just out of the blue, how is everything going with you, Mark? Great, great. Every day's Christmas. Uh, you know, I've got this wonderful uh, person that I uh, uh, find living with me. And uh, <laughs> I mean, Elaine is the best part of every day, as I always say, and I mean it. And uh, everything is going great. It's uh you know, the main challenge now is to hit that uh, that goal for the Twilight Zone uh, campaign. And that's going to be heavy lifting uh, over this upcoming month. But other than that, everything is, is going great. And, you know, no complaints at all. But, yeah, that's me in a little nutshell. Okay. And uh, I'll write my email address and my phone number. And uh, if anybody needs anything, I'm great. always here. Cool. So. Right. Thank you. Great. Yay. Okay, Adam, do we have a Mr. Sci-Fi question? Uh, let's see. No new questions. No? Nope. Okay. On, then we will uh, um, we will continue along. So, uh, Deborah, you're next on my screen. Oh, I wanted to share my, my notebook. Sure. Uh, my pitch deck. Um, uh, David, uh, did you... Um, can you make me the host? So I can share my screen, please. I can I can do that for you. Do, do you mind? Um, okay. Can I do that? He'll do it for you. Yeah. Sure. It sure. should be 
There we go. Okay. okay. Um, so let me just um, speak about this. I'm looking for a producer, director. Um, I've written quite a lot of, I've got a quite a body of work that I've been working, working on. Um, I have, you know, three movies, two TV series, and I'm now trying to learn how to get through with my work. So hmm. um, Nathaniel has been great in helping me and he's, he picks up every, like, I was so glad to hear Sherry speaking about Nathaniel because he picks up every role just like that and it's just been amazing. So I'm a member of NYWIFT and he comes to our meetings and he does everything that we need. But this is, so this is my one that I'm really focusing on now and it's called the Cree Remedies. Cree is the Irish word for love. And um, it's about a sexual healer, but I want to share this, this pitch deck to see what you think of it um, and to see where I can get going. I need to reach out to someone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so um, let me just share screen and I'm going to go to here. Okay. There. Okay. Now, can you see? Yes. Okay. okay, there we go. Great. So, um, I'll, uh, I'll, you no. don't want me to read the whole thing, but. No, no, um, no. But, okay. An Irish sexual healer, you're in, you're on good, good ground there. Absolutely. <laughs> hot, hot redhead always works. Let's see. Uh, um, okay. I might shorten the log line and I have got other ones to do. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But okay. I mean, it looks so at story origin. That's just my story, um, how I came to it. Mm -hmm. The themes love, lust, power, and redemption. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, and it's the Cree, um, the Irish, and the Creole. Mm -hmm. They come together and mm -hmm. um, in New York City in 1920. <coughs> and they have these really multicultural characters and sexual invocations, ancient remedies. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, a, it's fun and it's funny and it's sad and it's dramatic. Hmm. So, okay. so the synopsis um, is with the young girl's mother is killed um, in 1914. She mm -hmm. goes and lives with her mother and learns all the healing remedies, except the Cree, the sexual healing because she's got to find her soulmate before she does that. Um, her grandmother begins to show signs of dementia and, and time is running off. So, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so there are the stakes, the ticking clock, cool. um, the, the dementia and the mm -hmm. loss of an ancient Irish position, mm -hmm. the complications, the grandmother <clears> becomes <throat> more, uh, she becomes more forgetful. Her granddaughter manages to steal the remedies and gets everyone into trouble. And um, the consequences, the granddaughter's actions set into motion a series of events that really threaten the survival of the remedies and the life, lives of her life of her stepmother. Mm -hmm. So that's that. And there are three strong female leads. My dream is, of course, Meryl Streep hmm. um, and Anya, who's mm -hmm. the main character, uh, the, the grandmother. Mm -hmm. She wants redemption. Mm -hmm. Kerry O'Cora, um, she's once love. She's the granddaughter, mm -hmm. and um, and Marie Perry, she is the Creole healer who marries Kerry's father. Cool. And you know, but Beyonce is the number one Creole um, person in the mm -hmm. in, in America, uh -huh. I guess, in the world. And then we have got the men in their lives. Mm -hmm. William, who's a Protestant Irishman. Mm -hmm. um, their son Aidan, who's mm -hmm. married to Marie. And then Susan for Perry. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Babuti Pierre, who's um, an influential character. That mm -hmm. our dream actor is Nathaniel. And um, and then we've got Rika and Afrikaans heiress, who's mm -hmm. engaged to your hunt. Okay. And then very powerful antagonists, the British soldiers mm -hmm. in Ireland, the Catholic Church and the KKK. Mm -hmm. And then where's the story going? I'm seeing three three seasons oh and and, and one, oh but I'm not gonna and just hang hang, hang Deborah hang De oh Deborah hang on one second uh Carol you're not muted so you might want to mute your your mic 
So sorry. That's okay. Thanks. Okay, go go ahead, please, Deborah. And so then that's me. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm, okay, great. Okay, so no, it's it's a, it's a very credible uh, pitch deck, and it looks good. You've done your your work. Um, you know the challenge. So so now, has any of your work gotten made yet? Or I I don't know your your background as well as I right. I could. No. Okay. Um, I got very close with my first movie right. from Africa in South Africa. They right. really, it's it's a book that I wrote, um, Amaranth Boom. They really were interested in Great. it, and it got really close. So, so what? Um, are, so, what do you see? Your, what do you see your next few steps as being? Well, I've been um, advised. Okay, my colleagues at Nywift and um, various people at various places that I've been. They've been saying that they feel like this, I mean, it feels pretentious to even say that, but they feel like this is something that is ready for streaming. Mm -hmm. I did a table read. Everyone loved it. Uh -huh. People who are real professionals, you know, asked me and were going to reach out to the, the people that they know because yes. there were two people who did that mm -hmm. and um, we're still waiting to hear back from them. So there are people who really, having heard the table read of the pilot, really yes. are interested in this, mm -hmm. are engaged in it. I haven't heard anyone say no. This is not interesting. This is not a. Um, this is not for us. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So I mean, ugh, I'm just leaning over because somebody fell. Um, uh, the what I would say is, you know, it just, it depends. Selling a series now. This is a TV series rather than a movie. Is that correct? TV series, yeah. Right. The main challenge, of course, is getting it to the people who matter, you know. And yeah. and for so the first thing I would say, and you can and you can return the screen to the you know to Adam yeah. uh, okay. with his great yeah. great brain and so all that share, stuff. And then yeah um, yeah what I would, but who's, who's the who's the host? Adam is Adam yeah. is Adam, yeah he swings Adam. a big bat. Thanks, okay. So um yeah. but the uh, what I was gonna say is the several things I would advise. Make sure that you do not affiliate with people who cannot get anything accomplished. This is a common error that many people make. And so don't do that. I mean, if, if it were me, because I'm learning this stuff as I'm going as well. I have lunch, we have lunch tomorrow with an executive at Netflix um, and that should be very fun and very pleasant. Um, here's what I would say. Uh, they're starting to have conferences again where the the executives in charge of series will be speaking in person. And even if they're just on Zoom, that's valuable too. Variety has conferences. Um, um, who else? There's a bunch of these things. Um, you know, there's there's MIP. There's uh, um, the one in London. Um, um, what's it called, Lynn? Do you remember? It's uh, Anyway, there's a whole bunch of these. And I would do that because the main challenge is access. And at these conferences, you can actually talk to people who are in the positions of power because the, the, that's the challenge. <clears throat> and you can also talk to showrunners and you can also meet people. I mean, I'm doing the showrunners network now where I'm affiliating with, with six major showrunners who've created numerous hit shows. That comes from going to conferences and meeting people and, and so forth. But, you know, what, what he's talking about, and, and it is critical, is I've heard this from people who had a lot of credentials, which is uh, momentum. And the thing about the momentum is that the more people <clears throat> who have reputations uh, that are connected to your project, the less afraid the buyers are. And it's sort of like, well, if they approve of it, if this particular <clears throat> uh, star director or actor uh, it, you know, really loves it, then uh, I might take a chance. So it's the, a weight of momentum where you keep adding more coal so uh, until you're the name, but until you're the name, no matter how good your stuff is, it's like they're not they're not connecting with material. They're connecting with names. And that's a shame. That's a shame. Uh, but it's a very frightened industry. And the more you can find, oh, this would be a great actor with a name. This would be a great director with mm -hmm. a name. The more you get artists who have names or other showrunners, uh, the better your shot. The thing is to front load it as much as possible. Once you have a successful series, 
Well, yeah, then uh, it's a whole different ballgame. Then, then you're the you're then you're right. the person. But people are so afraid, and they do not have the wherewithal to take a chance on their own. But if right. you front load it with all kinds of like safety but again, factors. But again, meeting people in person is the way to do it because if you're trying to blind submit stuff, that's not going to work at all. And, uh, you know, because there's nothing to differentiate you or your project from the millions of other projects that people are trying to get, get going. And so, so, so what among, oh, go ahead. So you're trying to get artists yes. who will respond Sorry. to the material. Uh, um, and then if enough artists respond to the material, then the, um, the execs will follow. But they, they're, they're, it's funny, the best material, they're just not, they're just, they're, they're looking for the names. They're just afraid. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. like, they don't trust their own taste. Yeah. Yeah. But I also don't blame them. They're talking, we're talking a lot of money. Yes. yes. But again, because, but, but again, your job is to pull together things to make it happen. And the more you step outside your comfort zone, you know, I mean, the real question always becomes what differentiates those who succeed from those who fail? You know, that's, I've just written an entire book about that. And, you know, I've, I've managed to be a professional writer since I was 19, actually 18, when I had my first radio play broadcast. And, uh, you know, and, and the trick is, the first and most important thing is to actually see how things really work versus how you think they work or how you're told they work or any of that stuff. And, uh, and the way it works is you just trade up, you, you meet people, you charm them, you find any which way to create something persuasive. You, you just move heaven and earth. But, but I strongly believe in meeting people in person because it's so hard to stand out from the crowd unless you do that. You know, part of the problem is there always is a crowd. Yeah. So if anybody who's a, a booster of you, you know, say, are you a booster of me? Who can you get me to? Now, the good news is that once this goes over big and makes a lot of money, the next one will be so much easier because you'll be the name. But but, but for this thing, you know, I, I really like your material, but uh, they're, they're looking for the reassuring names like a, a theater, uh, a, a a mm -hmm. cinema director. Yeah. You know, anyone who says, oh, well, they're famous and they say it's good. So I guess I do like it. You know, I mean, look, I mean, we'll know a lot more if we succeed in selling these shows that we're making. You know, I, right now, the way I'm doing stuff is I'm raising money from my audience and I have my own YouTube channel and I can reach millions of people with what I create and people send me millions of dollars from all around the world. Wow. And I'm creating a new model of how to create television. Now, is that what I want to do solely? No. I mean, obviously, if, if Amazon or Netflix or Apple picks up one or more of my shows, it just makes things easier because they've got the money. But but can I build a hierarchy of content uh, that reaches an audience that then is willing to pay money for it? Well, that's what I've been doing for the last few years, and it's it's worked so far. Will it continue to work? I don't know. You know, I like, you know, I try stuff and I try to do more of what works and less of what doesn't. And as the rules change and what used to work doesn't work anymore, I, I stop doing that. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's a very different world than when I started and there were just three networks, you know. And uh, so, so doing things the way you would have done them back when I started uh, would be insanity now because it doesn't work that way. You know, so that's. Might it be, might it be a good idea for Deborah to try and get an agent? Yes, of course. But the but but again, the question becomes how do you get an agent? You know, for instance, I you know, it's like uh here's what I'm doing to get an agent right now because we're locking down representation for Space Command and the other shows I'm creating. Will it work? I don't know. We'll find out. Uh what I did was I made a list of the shows that I loved, of recent shows that I loved. And Angelique, who works with us, did her research and found out who the showrunners were on those shows, then who the agents were representing those showrunners. Then we went down the list of the showrunners that I personally know and saw where there was a crossover. And then I emailed all of my successful friends and I said, um, would you be open to recommending me to your representation? And a number of them said yes. And so now I'm being considered. Will that work? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. But but that's how hard it took even at my level to even get considered 
And and do, so do keep your eye out for really powerful managers because yeah. managers are more open to development of talent and taking on new talent, whereas uh, agents are working more for the agency than for the client. Yes. And so they're really looking for solid money that you had in the past. It's like the difference between having a really good individual entertainment attorney or looking at a firm. The firms are out for firm money. Individual yeah. entertainment attorneys are, are often out for you and your specific well, deal. But firms are, I, I don't like firms. And well, my attorney it, doesn't like firms. But, it, but again, the issue isn't having someone rep you on the contract. First, you have to get a contract. And you need, so... So do you, uh, what, I mean, are you planning to get an agent? What is your plan? I, I have a, I have an entertainment attorney. Okay. But she is there. She doesn't, well, she said she would represent me and try and get into medicine. Okay. But she doesn't normally do that. Right. But, so the chances of her doing it are. Oh, yes. Yeah. Know, but, well, uh, well but it, she normally does the business side of, of actually contracts. And well. Things. Find but, out, yeah. find out who she would reach out to and what level they are at, because most executives do not have the power to buy. But if there are one or two levels below that, that's good. Uh, so if it's a vice president, that's good. You know, um, I mean, I, sometimes the mo the best route is a direct route. And uh, so if she can really connect you to the right people at Netflix, do but, that. But Start it, there. It sounds like she, she may not be able to. Well, find so, out. No, find find out. out. But do, do be cautious yeah. because we've had uh, in our long career, we've had like lovely, eager agents and managers uh, where they were they had more difficulty in getting someone to take their call than we did. So, you you know, it's, you're okay. wise to be cautious. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is a bit... Um... Yeah, I've, I've had people contact me and they've turned into um, scary, you know, like you'll never eat lunch in this town again kind of thing. But, oh, okay. God. So thank you for your sure. advice. Sure. And, um, thank you so much for, you know, plowing forward and doing things differently. Of so, course. Of oh, course. Great. Good job. I, great. I do, but I, 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 like I like your, your I like your deck. Yeah, you it's good. good it's yeah. solid. Yeah. And uh, so great. Well, good luck. Let us know how things progress. Yay. Yay. Three cheers. So, Adam, is there another Mr. Sci-Fi question? Uh, yes. And yes. I was going to say, it reminds me, though very loosely, about the, a Netflix series called Sex Education, mm. which is, um, it's it's kind of in the same realm, I guess, but very, very different. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, our question is a Scott Gamble question. Okay. And uh, he asks, what was your most random and unexpected positive encounter with someone of note in your career, and did it impact you in any way? So wait, re read that again, please. What was your most random and unexpected positive encounter with someone of note? I'm assuming like a celebrity or- Well, uh, that's tricky because very, very little of what I do is random. I mean, I suppose it was when I was at Comic-Con and I was walking in the dealer's room floor and I ran into Guillermo del Toro, this is before, Pan's Labyrinth, and I introduced myself, and then a couple of years later, I ran into him again at Comic Con, and reconnected with him, and then that led to us writing a book together, you know, and and everything that's come since. So, uh, and what did you say to introduce yourself? I said, "Hi, I'm Mark Zickry. I'm the author of The Twilight Zone Companion." Because most, like half the people in Hollywood, own that book. So, what I, I what I always do is I there's where's one or two go tos that I use as my opening line. You always have to say something in your opening sentence that legitimizes you. Uh, because every conversation in Hollywood is about who's real and who's not. And uh, so I either say I wrote The Twilight Zone Companion, and if their eyes light up, then I know that that, that worked. And if if there's no reaction, I say, well, and, and I've also uh, uh, written and sold over 100 scripts. And, you know, so then then that also, then that works. You know, I mean, or if they're a Star Trek fan, I mentioned my Star Trek credits or whatever. You know, I, I target it to their enthusiasms. But because I've had such a wide breadth of credits from Smurfs to, you know, Friday the 13th, the series, uh, it gives me a lot of, a lot of bandwidth. Um, but sometimes I, I try to introduce myself to people and they just blow me off and, uh, and aren't impressed at all. And so, you know, you just, you just roll the ball and see if you hit anything, you know, but, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, that's what, that's what I do. So, but in terms of the 
the most, I mean, the most important person I ever met in my life was Elaine. And, uh, you know, the second most important, important person I ever met was my friend, Michael Reeves, who got me into television. Uh, the two of them are the are most responsible for my career. Uh, in terms of running into people at random, you know, I'm very directional. I go to science fiction conventions to meet specific people. If I meet other people that I didn't know would be there, that's great. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to collect people because, and it's not so much that I try to collect famous people or, 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 or hugely successful people. I try to, I try to collect talented people, people who are good at what they do. And so, you know, I mean, like Ian McCaig, who's my character designer on everything I've done in the last 25 years, the next guy who hired him after I hired him on Magic Time was George Lucas. And Ian went on to d design Darth Maul and Queen Amidala and so forth. And he's, he's one of the top uh, um, character designers in Hollywood and has been for the last several decades. But it wasn't that I did that, that I, had, I reached out to him because he was famous. It's that he reached out to me because he, he responded to a script I wrote and uh, we just really hit it off. So um, so that's that's some of it. So now, where's Nath is Nathaniel still here? Nathaniel, or did, did we Nathaniel, lose you? did we lose you? Sh shucks, that's a he shame. Had to go to work. Oh, I wish he told us because we right? would we would <laughs> we would have taken him. We would have taken him. Gosh darn it. Okay, well I think it's Elaine's turn now. Elaine, wonderful Elaine, oh, go dear, for it, Elaine. I'm sorry, he's gone to work. Yeah, someone should email him and say next time. Uh, um, we'll take him first. Yeah, if he. Yeah, exactly. But yes, yes so, so it's your turn, Elaine. Go for it. Tell them all, all your news and what you need. Uh, just, well, you know, as, as Mark has mentioned, we're plugging away, and um, Dave, <laughs> uh, we're plugging away in uh, putting together, you know, our first pass at our completed, mm -hmm. um, you know, first two, is it two episodes or would you call it one episode? It's a two-hour episode. Two-hour episode yeah. of Space Command. Yeah. Which is fun, you know, seeing it all come mm -hmm. together Oops. and then... And seeing all of the things that make us happy and the few things that kind of make us pale and say, well, I got to fix that one before yeah. we release it. Yep. But, uh, but, but, but having come from theater, I love the flexibility of film where you can actually fix it. Yes. Because if you fall on your face in theater, which I, you know, you do occasionally <laughs> or drop a line and can't remember what scene you're in, you're just, that's, that's that, you know, <laughs> you're stuck with it. So, um, so it's it's that that is fun to work in film and to have done so much editing. Mm -hmm. And right now, beyond Space Command, just trying to, you know, going for the money and the producer to help get a couple of my films over the top. So just again, trying to attach specific people to yes. specific projects. I get a lot of enthusiasm. Well, Ray, by, Ray Fine is being approached right now. So that's pretty cool. So we'll see, you know, we'll see what make, happens. See, try and get a couple of names and uh, continue going after the money. I have things that I really like that are like, I guess, touchy feely films and uh, more, uh, a more, com more commercial stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yay! But uh, mm -hmm. so yes, right now just looking for uh, alliances, um, and that's that's it for me mm -hmm. for now. Yes. Yay, yay, Elaine! Are there any more Mr. Sci-Fi questions, Adam? Yes, uh, we have. One more. Oh, great. We have two more. Uh oh, uh, look out. Let's go with uh, a new person. Yay. Distorted reality. <laughs> that's great. And, that, says, and, that's his, and, and that's his real name, by the way. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Mr. Reality asks yes. uh, Is there a story subject matter that you would not write about, even though it would make a great story? Uh, uh, not as. I mean, I would never write anything that was deliberately violent or cruel toward people who have no power. In other words, I, I, I always side with the little guy. I always side with the people who are striving for something better, something more. I, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't strike out an easy target, so to speak. You know, um, it's, you know, I, I, and, you know I'm, I'm politically liberal, so that's going to shape what I do. Uh, in terms of the kind of stories that attract me, um, every now and then, well, like you know, when I when I was the story editor on Friday the Thirteenth, the series, <clears throat> had it been a series based on the movies, I wouldn't have done it, because it would just be a slasher thing. Uh, it, instead, it was about you know two cousins trying to collect all these cursed objects that their uncle had disseminated throughout the world and put them under lock and key to stop people from being harmed. And I said when I came aboard the show, I said. Um, our villains can be perverse, but we must not be. The spirit of the show must not be. 
And so while I was there during the first season, that that was the philosophy that we pursued, um, you know. But um, so, yeah, so I don't want to do anything that's going to cause harm in the real world. I'm, I don't want to do anything that causes people to become less compassionate. Uh, or insensitive or, uh, you know, I mean, I'm trying to get people to see the common humanity in everybody, you know, that's, uh, that's what I'm interested in. Huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And you said there was one more question, Adam. I suppose I can knock that one off too. Oh, um, it was, uh, it was about veterans, uh, from Scott Baker. Veterans are great. He wants to know if, uh, veterans day should be a day off only for veterans. Uh, do you think the uh, public rep, uh, oh, that if uh, only veterans missed work today, people would notice. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, the problem, of course, with many holidays is that their meaning has been lost, by and large. Veterans Day, Memorial Day, there used to be an Armistice Day that celebrated the end of World War I. Lincoln's birthday and Washington's birthday have been merged into President's Day. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just like, these are just like days for people to take off and have a three-day weekend and enjoy a barbecue or whatever. And I'm not against that. But, but, you know, there's, there's certainly certain things worth celebrating and certain kinds of people worth celebrating. I wouldn't mind a dog's day, frankly, I, where we celebrate dogs. I, you know, that would be fine with me. Uh, dog parades, I would love that, you know. And, and we actually, at our park recently, they had Halloween with all the dogs and the dogs were in costumes. And it's, you haven't lived until you've seen three dogs dressed as a hot dog, ketchup, and mustard. <laughs> but but veterans have had an unusually hard, an exceptionally hard road to hoe, uh, in that first they put their lives on the line and they have then they damage other people, which often leaves them in a very bad frame of mind. They're inadequately well, supported, yeah. and it's coming out more and more how uh, screwed over they are once they get back home. Yeah, and so because it's one of the populations like the American Indian population, which is extremely ill treated and I think requires some attention. I, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that uh, their stories are, you know, come out on Veterans Day. Yes, yes. Though I think that, you know, one of the things we're going to be exploring in the third Space Command storyline, the Great Solar War, is the whole issue of war and how uh, war should not be acceptable as an alternative. War should be, the enemy is not the army that we're calling the enemy. The enemy is the notion of war itself. I mean, war, what is it good for? Well, yeah. yeah. Absolutely nothing. Yes. And somehow, somehow you don't quite, quite bring the conviction to that, that Edwin Starr did, but you know, but, but keep, keep practicing. Uh, you know, it's, uh, Maybe but you said it again. There you go. Say it again. Yeah, I can I can sing that whole song, but let's not. Um, okay, so I actually had that on a forty-five, which people now think is a gun. <laughs> you know. So there you go. Uh, okay, getting back to me, wonderful me. It's my turn. Yay! Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. It's always great to see everyone uh, and get these wonderful questions and all of that stuff. Uh, we are busy, busy, busy at work. Um, thank God, Green Lighting Yourself is completed. It's now with my publisher. Uh, amazing people have given me blurbs, and I'm very grateful for that. And uh, a number of great people are recommending me to their representation, including J.J. Abrams and Guillermo and on and on. It's just really great to have my friends step up in, in this way and uh, put in a word. Mark Fergus is doing this, the same, Roxanne Dawson. And uh, we'll see if I lock down uh, representation. I think it would be very helpful. Uh, if, if we don't, we go to plan B. There's always a plan B. Uh, meantime, as Dave and David mentioned, we're finishing the first two hours of Space Command and, um, to send them off to all of our people as a digital download at Christmas, to all our backers. Uh, we're, we've launched the Twilight Zone campaign. I'm doing it just between us to raise money to shoot Space Command. Uh, but it would be me doing the 104 Twilight Zone audio commentaries that I have not done. So I've done 52 on the Blu-ray. This would be the rest of the entire series. It would be an app that you would basically get, and every week, two of these commentaries would download right onto your phone, and you could watch your episodes of Twilight Zone and just play the commentary on your earphone, earbuds or whatever, and uh, it, it, totally painless, and 49 bucks for 104 episodes. Jesus. So go to so that's twilightzonecommentaries.com. Uh, that'll take you right to our campaign. We're off to a rather slow start, so I'm really going to have to hustle like crazy to to hit the target. But uh, I've been there before, so uh, so spread the word. Let people know. Every little bit helps. And um, 
Beyond that, we're moving forward on the Showrunners Network, which is five shows in addition to Space Command, and we've they're all in pilot form, pilot script form, or we've shot some of them, or God knows what, there's concept art, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, so, you know, we'll see where it all leads, but... Uh, but I'm, you know, we're nothing's slowing us down or stopping us. We're 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 roaring ahead. Uh, the Unreal Engine uh, people did not approve the five hundred thousand dollar grant for Ashes, but I understand that they've kind of put a moratorium on giving out grants overall because they were so inundated with submissions. So I'm going to reach out to them again and see if we can get that conversation open again. And uh, beyond that. Um, gosh, just so much stuff on our plate. Every every day is a is a new adventure. Um, yeah, just, I mean, you know, we're just getting ready to shoot more stuff uh, in the next few months, but it'll be great to have 101 and 102, the two first hours of Space Command done and shipped. It's been an enormous task. There's 1800 visual effects shots. And, uh, but what that has bought me doing this, opening a studio, raising the money, shooting this has brought me enormous credibility. And so that's why Guillermo del Toro and JJ and all these people are willing to, um, uh, you know, stake their reputations on me and, and put in a word on me and, and uh, you know, because I'm really doing it. And so, and Elaine and I are really doing it. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's great that, uh, that we have that, that, that standing and that respect because many, many of my friends are uh, struggling, you know, even friends who once had successful careers because they did not change with the times. And, you know, you, you just need to be on one or two bum shows or, or not be uh, hired for a year or two. And suddenly uh, it becomes a much, much harder uh, task to get hired. So um, that's why I wrote the Greenlighting Yourself book, because I really wanted people to have a lot of alternative actions they could take, regardless of where they were in their career. And, uh, you know, so, so there's that. Um, uh, beyond that, anything I'm forgetting, Elaine? I mean, no, just, you know, uh, subscribe to Mr. Sci-Fi, spread the word, you know, just throw some money at the Twilight Zone campaign. It's uh, going to be great. <laughs> and We've already uh, raised nearly 2%. That's great. Goal. Well, got to, got to pick it up, pick up the pace. Yeah. Uh, but if we, if we, if we get about three, three grand a day uh, or a little more, we'll get, we'll, we'll make it to our, to our goal. And that's not that impossible. So, I mean, we've been here. We, I mean, every Kickstarter campaign we've ever done, we've succeeded at. And a new executive at Kickstarter actually e emailed me having seen that this was about to launch and saying how excited she was and, and saying, if I can be of any help, I'd be happy to. So now I have two, two, two advocates at Kickstarter. And that's terrific because you, if having someone on the inside, can do a lot. <laughs> so, um, so that's sort of the main stuff. So we'll be here next, next week. We're also going to be at Comic-Con there. There oddly enough, San Diego Comic-Con is happening over Thanksgiving weekend. So we're actually going to have a screening and, and we're going to take our, our, those investors of ours who want to meet us there. We'll take to lunch and, uh, it's going to be great fun. And, you know, we keep, we keep going. We keep going. So uh, that's about it for now. Anything else anyone needs before we sign off? I think we're good. So thank you all. Thank you, my table friends. Thank you, my Mr. Sci-Fi friends. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys. Take care. Stay well. Bye, guys. <laughs>